Hey, Jim Bergman on behalf of True Tech Tools. Just wanted to take a little break here and show you a project I'm working on. Uh, actually building a little uh, trainer to use for refrigerant retrofit for blue on. So I've got actually two R22 units sort of side by side here that we're getting set up with condensing units. And I was getting ready to do the piping and uh, I was talking to Eric and he uh, mentioned that they got, they got in a new uh, RLS refrigerant locking system. And let's uh, go ahead and give it a shot here. So. I grabbed some fittings and stuff and I, I told Eric I'd do a video on it and all of a sudden I realized, man, I'm almost done with this job already and I didn't even realize uh, how quickly things are going. I had used one of these back, I, I want to say probably 10 years ago. Um, it was Rigid Pro Press before they actually had gaskets that were suitable for refrigerant. You know, so this, we've seen this, these tools go through sort of a, um, through sort of an evolution where, you know, it went primarily from a plumbing tool and then they, we saw it go into to natural gas and now uh, we're seeing it go into the refrigerant side. And the refrigerant side is actually pretty intriguing to me. And, and especially now that I've used this kit for a little bit, just to understand uh, how it all works. So pan down here for just a minute. I want to show you what, what comes with a kit. Because this is, um, it's a, it, it, it is truly a system. And you've, you've got to use everything that, that comes with it. Um, because if you don't, you're, you know, your chances of having a, 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 a bad joint are, are probably quite a bit higher. But it's, it's so simple to use that, um, honestly, I don't think you could make a mistake if you're using all the, uh, all the stuff that comes in here. So I just want to start with a couple things because they do give you a, a, a rigid uh, tubing cutter on this. This has got a super sharp blade on it. And when you're cutting tubing, one of the things you got to watch is that, you know, that wheel actually digs into the tubing and it can actually push the metal up. And you get like a, a ridge here on the top. And that ridge on the top could catch the, the gasket when you slide it in, catch the O-ring and tear the O-ring up. So a super sharp um, blade is gonna minimize that amount of uh, the gasket. Now the second thing they include in here is a inside outside reamer. And this, zoom in here a little bit so you can just see how sharp this thing is. This is not like the ones we had when I was at Stride Tool that were, this thing's actually, when you put your finger in it and feel it, you can actually feel it's very sharp. But I found that the trick to using this thing is to just turn it, and I'm holding this in my left hand here, just to turn it in a clockwise direction so you can feel it cut. And when it cuts off, what it's doing is taking off this material on that edge uh, where the tubing cutter would leave that, that little lip on there. And it gives it a nice beveled edge on there. So this is probably the, one of the most important steps is to make sure that you have a good clean edge on there. And then it's also got an inside on there um, that you can use. I always cut back, cut again. I'm not a real big on rolling it back and forth like this because I think it, it tears up that edge. And then I'm, I'm actually still more partial to this um, little burr remover to, to clean the copper off on the inside, but outside you can't get a better job than, than this tool uh, does for that. The next step when you're doing one of these joints is to make sure that you're cleaning the outside of the copper tube. So you want to take and clean the outside off so that you got a good clean surface. They give you a scotch Brite pad for that in there. And that's going to get all the imperfections like any tape you have or any small scratches on there that could, uh, that, that could uh, affect the ceiling. And then this, this piece is pretty slick. This is actually a gauge. So what you do with a gauge here is you take the marker. And all I did here is just take, put it on the edge of the gauge and just spin the copper tube and then we'll spin it around same way and mark the, the depth. Now what this is for is for minimum insertion. So, and th these fittings are actually pretty interesting. These are soft drawn copper. And so you gotta be careful with these things. And you can tell these are refrigeration uh, by this uh, lip on the edge here that's sort of beveled up like a flare fitting. And that's just so these slide in easily and so they're also visually identifiable. Now, as soon as you go past this, you'll feel it touch, the, kiss the O-ring, and then just give it a gentle twist and slide it in. And then this is the minimum insertion that you, you have to have. And that means that if you look at this, if I back this back out again, there's enough copper past that O-ring so that it's got a seal on the, um, on the copper here. So when you slide it in, it's gonna go in and, and up to this point. Now, what's cool with this fitting is on the jaws, if you look at these, let me get the three-quarter jaws here. When these jaws clip on here, there's actually a, a bead on the inside that the O-ring really does not get crimped. What's crimped is up here in the front, 
and it's crimps, it crimps the copper. And actually when it, when it does this, it, if you think about what's going on here, it's creating sort of a wedge like this. So the copper gets crimped down and what happens is when that wedge is there, it can't pull that copper back out again. So it actually, if it were to try and push apart like under pressure, it's actually getting tighter and tighter on that, on that O-ring. Now O-rings have been around forever and it's actually probably one of the best sealing surfaces that you can get on there. And the reason that I like O-rings so much is because they actually get tighter and tighter of a seal under higher and higher pressure. So again, the odds of a leak with this type of assembly system are extremely low. And then if you were to hydrostatic test these things, um, they, they meet standards that actually take these in the thousands of PSI. So they're gonna really handle a, quite a bit of pressure on there. In fact, uh, I will bet you a dime to a dollar that the tubing will break before the fitting will, will blow apart. And that's just, uh, just because the, the copper is typically softer than the, um, than the, the, you know, than the joint is itself. And speaking of the joint itself, here's another interesting fact with these things is once this is crimped down, this actually creates a, so again, we talked about this being soft copper, this actually machine hardens this and it makes it into a, a hardened joint. So it's, uh, it's very, very cool technology, makes this very easy to assemble. Obviously they have 90s and street 90s. Um, this has got a, uh, a whole, you know, what I'm doing in these things here, it's, there's a lot of tight piping. So you can see how I crimp these on here. You can see how the O-ring's definitely not crimped. The, the mechanical fittings here. And if you look down here, this one's probably easiest to see. You'll see that there's actually an RLS stamped on the fitting itself. And that just shows that you've used the RLS jaws and the RLS fitting and it's all part of the system. Now, the other thing they did with this that's really quite interesting is um, there is a, a, a crimp gauge on here. And this, when you clip it around the fitting, what it's doing here is showing you that that fitting got completely crimped properly. So you can see it goes around there if you got it on an area that wasn't crimped. So real quickly, you can just take these and go fitting to fitting to fitting and make sure that the gauge drops down on there uh, all the way and that you got all, the, all your fittings crimped before you pressurize it. So very, very slick and easy to use. Um, so I'm gonna be crimping some stuff here in just a minute. I'm gonna finish cutting the piping, but. It happened so fast, by the time I'm done here, um, I wanted to catch a little bit on this video so you guys could appreciate what, what we're doing. Uh, pretty awesome little system, super light compared to what it used to be and really, really quite easy to use. All right, so when you wanna prep tubing for this, a couple of, couple of quick things here. Um, you can see I got some tape on here. I just cut this off. And if you listen closely, let me go up to the next to my mic here. You can hear there's a little burr on the edge of that right there. And that's just that small burr I was telling you that the, the tubing cutter does. So when you prep this, what you wanna do is first of all, get the interior burr out. So I'm just gonna spin this around inside here and you'll see that that's cutting that, that burr off, right? And you just wanna get the burr off the edge and this is just gonna keep your refrigerant oil and stuff traveling back and not puddle any oil in there. So that, that gets that interior burr off. The next step here is to take our, our our, in, our outside reamer, and we're gonna just put it up here and we're just gonna slowly turn it back, turn, cut, turn, and then you're gonna see that that edge now is gone. And if I take this up here now, that edge is, is, that's actually just rolling my finger over the edge here. Let me get it one more time and we'll make sure it's completely off there. So now you can see that whole edge is clean on side there. Now, this is the stuff I was telling you you wanna get off, and even if you were doing brazing, you want to get residual tape and stuff off. You know, they, they put tape on this copper when they ship it. So this is what the Scotch-Brite pad's for. Wrap the Scotch-Brite around it. And then we're just going to burnish the copper in this direction. I really think it's probably best to burnish in a circle like this because it's, it's creating grooves this way instead of this way. And, you know, obviously the O-ring's round and it's going to seal against those grooves. But now you can see that's nice and clean. Then the last step here is just to put it into our into our gauge, depth gauge here. And I just take it and spin it around like this, get a nice ring around there. And then this joint is already prepped for going together in the fitting. All right, so now that we got our tubing prepped, the before you put your fittings together, one of the things you want to do is take a close look inside the fitting and inspect the O-ring in here. And what you're looking for is just any dirt or contamination, um, you know, any cardboard from the box or anything, but also to make sure that that O-ring's not cut or damaged in there. So it just takes a quick look and that looks fine. 
Then as soon as I slide this together here, I'm just gonna, when I feel it touch the O-ring, I'm just gonna give it a gentle push. It should slide right in. If, it, if it's hard to slide in, you can put a small amount of refrigerant oil on there to help it uh, slip in. But that's all you need to do, and then you know, we're ready to fit this up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a couple crimps on here. A couple things with the tool. There's a little index here, you, you, you pull it, pop it out. You may wanna take the battery off while you're putting the head on here, just so you don't bump the trigger like I just did. And then we'll drop the head in, and then all you do is just put it in, twist, and it'll lock the head in there. So take it out, it's just, get, again, a little twist. Let me figure out which way, there it is, and it pops right back out again and locks in. So it's very easy to get the head in and out. There is a manual release right here on the back of the tool. So one of the things that you gotta watch is, you know, when you're putting this thing together here, is that, you know, it's, as soon as you clip it around, if you bump the trigger, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna start getting into where you can't open the jaws up anymore. So this manual release will allow you to back that off, right? Same thing if you were to somehow uh, get your hand in the way or whatever, you know, you don't have to go all the way through a complete close cycle before to go back open. The manual release is uh, very important to know where that's at. All right, so when we go to connect the tool up, obviously, you know, this is a pretty serious pinch point, so you wanna keep your hands away from it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clip around and inside the radius here is where this O-ring is gonna sit. And then come around the other side here just so they can see where, the, where we're engaged at on here. So you can see that this is now where we want it. And I'm gonna get the camera, I'm gonna get everything lined up where I want it. And all I'm gonna do is pull the trigger. And it's gonna go completely through a cycle. Now, I never let go of the trigger. So from beginning to end, and then all I do is just take this off. And then I use my gauge to check and make sure that it's good. And you see my RLS is stamped right here where it's easy to see on here every time. And that'll, that's a pretty good indication that it got fully crimped. But we'll go through and we're all done and get the crimp gauge. So next fitting here, again, all I wanna do is just get around on the, on the, uh, on the O-ring again. So there's, this O-ring path is on both sides of the tool. So you don't have to turn the tool over or anything like that. I'll get this to where I want it. This fitting's not gonna really move too much on me. Pull the trigger. And hold the trigger till it goes all the way through the cycle. Pop it off and we're good to go. Now you could get a little bit of edge right here. And you can see I got this just a little bit of edge and you're, you gotta watch this with your gauge. It's not gonna hurt anything on there. It just happens to be where the, where the copper got uh, caught into the, uh, into the jaw set on there. But that can happen from time to time. And again, as you're doing this, watch, you can see I got every one of these marked. So you can see my, my mark here. I wanna make sure that that mark is not you know, out here because obviously we don't have enough copper there. So this is, if you, wanna, if you wanna have a failed joint, you're gonna make it yourself with this system because what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna take a shortcut and not mark the tubing and not be able to see where insertion depth is. And that's why this, this marking is so important of a step to do, you don't wanna skip that. Then just clip the tool on again. So we're gonna get it, watch where you're getting it lined up. I usually just give it a little rock just so I can make sure it's where I want it. Hold it all the way through. Now, if you screw up, just pull the release. And we'll just go ahead and we'll set this back in here. So this, this one fitting here, I'm gonna have to uh, the brazier solder in. I'll solder this in. You do have, when you're, when you're doing brazing on these things, there, there are prescribed distances. If you're not gonna use a, like a heat block or something on this that you need to be away, it's in the manual. Um, so you don't burn the O-ring up in here. But, Overall, just super simple and easy to use. So we'll go ahead and get the rest of these crimped up and then uh, we'll go from there. So you can see with, uh, with the swivel head how nice this is to get in here and it's easy to get your, you know, even work at some tight spots. And, you know, now that's all in and we're locked in solid. So now the next step is just to take our, our gauge and I'll just put it on across each one of these and make sure that they're all good. And the whole suction line's now piped in. So one of the tricks, if you're gonna use a, a system like this, refrigerant locking system, one of the best ways to keep the cost down is to obviously bend pipe wherever you can. It's sort of a lost art. I still bend a lot of pipe on here. You can see I've got this, this line bent up here. So I'm basically saving money on this fitting, this fitting, this fitting, and I'm you know all the way up to here. And what I did where it got a little tight because I was next to the wall in there and it was just hard to deal with a roll of co a copper, I just was able to um, was able to, you know, use the fittings there and pipe it in. So, but you figure each one of these fittings, you know, to bend a piece of pipe, this one here I've got set up. So I just got to roll it up here 
and now I can carry this across and get the next piece in here. But it doesn't take a lot to, uh, to, to bend copper tubing and to get it where you want it, and then you know, it eliminates the, eliminates the cost of the fitting. So you have to deal with getting your tubing bender out, but you know, if that's the worst of it, then you're in pretty good shape. So now I got the next fitting in. I'll go ahead and roll the, the bender up here and I'll get the next one on the bender. So we got everything pressed in and everything looks good. It would, and really what's interesting with this process is even though the fittings do cost substantially more, we got done in a fraction of the time. And we got done without any hot work permit. We got done without burning anything. We got done without any make, making any smoke and we really got done with a lot less mess. So overall, you know, using a tool like this does have a cost, but you gotta remember who's paying for it. At the end of the day, it's your, it's your customer. And if you look at the cost of your labor, it's really you. And so it, uh, using a tool like this really does make you more productive. It makes the job go a lot easier. And overall, I think we've got a really nice finished product. This is Jim on behalf of True Tech Tools. Thanks a lot for watching.